Kharkiv could become a fatal city for Russian troops, Commander-in-Chief of Armed Forces of Ukraine. Kharkiv could become a fatal city for Russian troops if they try to occupy it again. Currently, large-scale comprehensive measures are being taken to strengthen the defense there, according to the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Alexander Sirsky. Commenting on the risks of a repeat Russian offensive in the Kharkiv region, Sirsky notes that all measures are being taken to adequately respond to such a possibility. We are carrying out a large complex of works on the fortification of territories and positions, installing a complex system of fences, and planning the use of our troops in the event of such actions, the Commander-in-Chief says. He reminds that the Ukrainian Defense Forces already have experience in combat operations in the Kharkiv region. Back then, they managed to calculate Russia's actions and liberate a significant part of the region. It was then that a large-scale collapse of the Russian front took place. If the Russians move there again, Kharkiv will become a fatal city for them emphasizes Sirsky. At the same time, he notes that the next possible defense actions could vary greatly due to the uniqueness of each situation on the battlefield. Russians are operating in the Kupiansk district of the Kharkiv region. After the deoccupation, Russian troops have not given up trying to regain control of it. This is due to the strategically important logistical interchange. In addition, the Russian occupiers continue to shell Kharkiv and the region incessantly, destroying civilian and energy infrastructure. Over the past day in the Kupiansk direction, the Ukrainian Defense Forces repelled one Russian attack near the village of Ivanivka, Kharkiv region. In addition, the settlements of Novoyhorivka, Ivanivka and Kislivka in the Kharkiv region were subjected to Russian airstrikes. Recently, the Russian media have been spreading information about preparations for covert mobilization to surround Kharkiv. At the same time, the mayor of the city, Ihor Terikov, calls it another hostile information and psychological operation. Ukrainian troops have problems with Starlink. It affects the drone war with Russia. Ukrainian frontline troops say they are experiencing connection problems with the vital Starlink internet service, according to CNN. Ukraine's self-detonating drones have been a cheap and effective weapon in the war to gather intelligence and destroy Russia's expensive military equipment. In recent weeks, Ukraine's drones have attacked Russian oil facilities and hunted down Russian ships in open sea and at naval bases. Ukraine's self-detonating drones are a staple to its arsenal. But in a series of interviews across the front lines, Ukrainian soldiers have said connection speeds have dropped in the past months and reported other connection problems. The complaints coincide with the rise in Ukrainian sightings of Russian uses of the satellite internet service run by Elon Musk's SpaceX and social media posts in which Russian crowdfunders claim to have successfully bypassed sanctions on Russian use of the devices, buying them in third countries. One communications operator in the Zaporizhia area, who asked to be named Misha, told CNN the issues had begun in the past three weeks. We started noticing a bad quality connection, he said. It breaks up all the time. It needs to be rebooted for it to start working properly. But soon the speed starts to decrease and the connection breaks up again. It brings rather unpleasant complications for their work, he added. Another drone operator, a commander of one of the dozens of units flying single-use attack drones at Russian targets, also in the Zaporizhia area, said his unit's issues had begun in January. Multiple Ukrainian units across the front lines told CNN they had experienced speed problems with Starlink and noted Russian use but declined to be named discussing a sensitive issue. When Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia destroyed the military's traditional internet service. Kyiv reached out to Musk and asked for emergency Starlink shipments. Their impact on the battlefield was almost immediate. Ukrainian military regained access to the internet and were able to coordinate their defense and counter-attack. U.S. disapproves of Ukrainian strikes inside Russia, State Department. The United States of America does not encourage or support Ukrainian strikes beyond its borders, said U.S. State Department spokesperson Matthew Miller. 
Journalist asked the State Department representative to comment on recent media reports that the United States opposes Ukraine attacking oil refineries within Russian territory and has asked Ukraine to cease such actions. I'm not going to go into specifics about conversations, but from the beginning of this war, our policy has always been that we do not encourage or support Ukraine striking outside its own territory, Miller said. Miller did not elaborate on what these specific conversations were, but indicated that the US position is well known to the Ukrainian government, so it's not something of which they would be unaware. On March the 22nd, the Financial Times reported that the US urged Ukraine to refrain from strikes on Russian oil refineries due to concerns over possible rising oil prices and a potential Russian response. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister Ola Stefanishina stated that Ukraine operates in accordance with NATO's best standards, echoing what she had heard from alliance partners at the outset of the full-scale war. Russian media have reported that Ukraine has attacked oil refining facilities within Russia and the occupied territories 14 times in the last three weeks. In recent weeks, Ukraine has found a way to overcome a lack of aid and a dearth of ammunition using long-range drones to strike oil industry assets deep inside Russia. The attacks on Russian oil refineries, which number at least a dozen so far, including some very long-range strikes, have damaged Russia's ability to process and refine its huge output of crude oil, dealing a small but meaningful blow to a Russian energy sector that has so far weathered the war and Western sanctions in surprisingly good shape. Moscow gets about 40% of its federal budget from the export of crude oil and refined products, making the sector a key part of the Kremlin's ability to increase defense spending, rebuild its shattered armies and purchase huge amounts of foreign-made weaponry to use against Ukraine.